Building a rock solid playback rig is way simpler, way more affordable than you think. In this video, I wanna share with you the four things you need in order to build a rock solid playback rig. Let's dive in and let's get started. What's happening everybody, this is Will and in this video I'm gonna share with you the four things you need in order to build a rock solid playback rig and prove to you that it's way simpler and way more affordable than you might think. Now, at the heart of all this, in order to build a rock solid playback rig, we need a redundant playback rig and that simply means if our playback machine stops working, it's gonna automatically switch or manually we can choose to switch to a backup machine. So that starts us at number one. Instead of buying one really super powered computer, going out and buying the newest laptop that Apple's created and completely maxing it out, uh, we wanna buy two completely identical computers. It doesn't matter how powerful your computer is, if it goes down, if you have an issue with it, if uh, your doll uh, crashes while that computer's running, everything stops. So we want two machines. For me personally, I've chosen two M2 MacBook Airs. Uh, these are super powerful machines for what they are. They are identical uh, and it works really well for me. So the first thing you need to build a rock solid playback rig is two completely identical computers. Now we've got our computers. How do we get audio out of our computers? How do we manage MIDI? out of those computers to make sure we're not sending out of both machines at the same time. That's where this guy comes in. I suggest, and I think the second thing you need to build a rock solid playback rig is the Play Audio 1U from my connectivity. Now, this is a fantastic interface that manages both my audio and MIDI uh, and gives me redundant audio output. So it's basically like having two audio interfaces and a audio switcher in one. Plus when it comes to MIDI, it allows me to only have MIDI coming from one machine at a time. And again, I can do both automatic, which just means if it senses there's an issue with my A machine, it switches to my B machine, or I can manually switch with a foot switch on the front screen uh, to go from my A machine to my B machine. This keeps things so simple and really, really easy to get started. I don't need direct boxes. I can plug XLR directly out of here. This is a rock solid built for the stage connection. Uh, I don't need power con. I don't need a power conditioner. I can just plug the power cable straight out of here uh, into the power on the stage and I'm ready to go. Now, the third thing that we need uh, that I, I think is just gonna give you a little more flexibility to help you not feel like you're checking your email on stage, not constantly be working and touching your computer is a MIDI controller. And there's a lot of fantastic options for MIDI controllers, certainly MIDI controllers ranging in different prices, different flexibility, uh, different features. But I would suggest getting something that's very simple. We don't need to assign every song section for every song. We primarily need four things, play, stop, previous, and next. Uh, that's gonna give us uh, the ability to navigate our set list um, uh, really simply. And again, way easier to navigate using a MIDI controller like this than it is to be staring at our computer at, at all times and trying to keep those in sync. Now, another beautiful thing about the Play Audio 1U is if my MIDI controller like this one has a USB connection, then I can plug it into my USB host port right here on the front. If it's got five pin MIDI, then I can plug it into this MIDI input on the front here. And that's gonna automatically split that to both of my sh machines to keep them in sync for the entire show, which again, keeps it really, really simple. I don't need an extra MIDI controller, an extra MIDI interface to keep those in sync. I can do all that with the Play Audio 1U, which is great. Now, the fourth and final thing to build a rock solid playback rig, um, again, it's gonna give us a foundation, it's gonna allow us to expand, is to buy some sort of rack case. Now, I suggest uh, you buy a shallow rack case, which means I believe nine inches is kind of the standard measurement there. You could see because of uh, how shallow this is, the benefit of this, this is a two U, two unit, uh, which means I can basically stack two one U uh, items in this. I'm gonna put my Play Audio 1U in here, but the reason we wanna get a shallow rack case uh, is that I can access my power and my XLR outputs from my interface very easily. So you can see right there, um, those outputs are not very far away from the back. Now, what that means is I don't have to go out and spend thousands of dollars on a custom rack panel that gives me XLR outputs and power outputs. I just reach right into the case and plug in. And typically with racks like this, this is one that I personally own. It comes with a case as well. So uh, this one has wheels, very easy to get around the airport. It's made a few trips with me and, uh, and, and just kind of keeps everything safe. And I have a one use space left over. I could put a rack shelf in there. I could put another piece of gear, I could set up a vocal processing rig. 
I have expandability with this. So if you want a rock solid playback rig, something that's gonna give you a rock solid foundation you can expand on, four things you need. Number one, two identical computers. Don't buy one super powered computer, buy two identical computers. Number two is a Play Audio 1U that's gonna handle all your audio and MIDI redundancy. Everything you need is in the box ready to go. Number three, buy some sort of MIDI controller just to simplify your control to not look like you're checking your email on stage and not be overwhelmed just managing and babysitting computers. Number four, to keep all your gear safe, to give you the ability to set up quickly uh, and to expand your rig easily, consider getting a shallow rack case and a drop-in case if you can to keep things going. Now, if you have any questions about this, if you have any questions about iConnectivity gear, um, have some questions about your specific iConnectivity gear, what's best for you, check out the link below uh, in the description uh, to visit our help center, ask some questions to our amazing support team, and they'll be happy to help and get you going in the right direction. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.